Hey there, Mr. No Job For You. Hey there, that's actually Mr. No Job For You. The O is silent. Hey, well, I'd like to apply to your company. I have tons of job experiences that I think would work really well with you. Oh, okay, well, hand over your resume. Let's see what you have. Yeah, for sure. What's up everyone, it's Oliver. Today I'm gonna to be talking about different internships slash co-op jobs that you can get in a mechatronics degree program. I'm sure that some of you know that getting an internship is an amazing way to get a full-time job after you graduate. So today I'm gonna to be looking at some of the options that you have while still in school to get an internship at a very cool company. So I'm gonna be going over some great companies that you could work at if you choose one of these jobs and what you might be doing on the job or what the particular job entails. If you're looking forward to the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get into it at number one with a robotics job. I know that lots of mechatronics engineers go into the program because they want to work on robots, so getting a job at a robotics company would be a great way to ensure that you're employed after graduation in robotics. There are lots of cool companies that do robotics like Boston Dynamics, Tesla, or even the military, just to name a few. A lot of these companies where robotics work is done require you to have a background in software engineering, so you have to be really good at coding and software related things. However, also having experience in different fields relating to hardware and electronics can be extremely helpful and really brighten up your resume to try and get a job at one of these companies. So closely related to robotics, we have number two, which is software engineering. There are so many companies, all of the big tech companies, banks, Literally anything that you can think of probably has a job for a software engineer nowadays. Because you spend a lot of time learning about software, different coding languages, and how they're used relating to hardware, people in mechatronics usually get lots of jobs in the software industry, so you should definitely feel more than comfortable applying to a software engineering company and trying to get one of those great software engineering jobs. I'm gonna rapid fire through a lot of these things, and then at the end I'm gonna talk about salary expectations and some more resume tips so that you can actually get one of these jobs. All right, coming in at number three, we have an FPGA engineer. If you don't know what an FPGA is, it looks a little something like this. It stands for a Field Programmable Gate Array, and essentially it's a very niche thing that people do, but it's used a lot in embedded systems. And if you're in a mechatronics degree, you will probably learn how to use the programming language Verilog and that will help you to get one of these jobs. In some sense, this job is one of the most pure mechatronics engineering jobs. It's literally in your coursework. And an FPGA is one of the best ways to integrate hardware, software, and electrical engineering. So this one really shines in the mechatronics field and lots of mechatronics engineers end up working for companies like Intel or Shilinx. You can do lots of things with FPGAs, but most of the time they're used by big corporate partners or in large mass consumer electronic products. Other people can then take what you built and program it themselves and then use it in the field. Coming in at number four, we have product or design engineers. This one is very common for mechatronics engineers as well. Design engineering and product engineering isn't really specific to mechatronics or any other engineering field per se. So regardless of your interest, this could be a really cool field to actually learn about how products are made, what materials go into them, and come up with some decisions that could actually be in the hands of physical consumers. Some big companies, when you think of good design engineering, are companies like Apple, Tesla, Ford, any computer manufacturer. You'll also probably be doing some testing and quality assurance to make sure that the products do what they're supposed to do and that they don't fall apart as soon as they're shipped. Coming in at number five, we have teaching. Now, this one actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it because you have spent probably so much of your life in school thinking about engineering and breathing engineering that it only makes sense to try and pass on the knowledge to the next generation. So getting a job as a teaching assistant or as an instructional intern for your university can be a really good way to improve your skills, improve your public speaking skills, improve on knowledge that you already gained because now you have to try and teach it to other people. There are tons of great things to be said for trying to get a job in the teaching field. So if you think about it, if these universities are making so much money doesn't it kind of make sense to get a job at a university because they're making so much money? So in essence, if the university is making a lot of money, the teachers are probably getting paid a lot. So teaching can definitely be a great career. Coming in at number six, we have web development. This job will require you to do a lot of learning on your own because you aren't gonna learn any useful web development languages in your engineering degree. 
All of the software that you're gonna be learning about is super industry focused. So if you're not super interested in working in industry and you want to do something more practical, then maybe don't do an engineering degree and just go to a trade school or do a boot camp and learn about web development that way because you'll probably be a lot better off and a lot happier and you'll be learning things that seem more useful to you. Obviously, understanding the groundwork can be extremely helpful, but if you want to work in web development or something, maybe just take a computer science degree instead of trying to do an engineering degree. But if you still want to do web development, there's nothing stopping you from doing it in your free time and then looking for a web development internship, as most universities will accept these. On top of that, if you get really good at it, you can try and sell some of your services independently to local businesses. So learning a little bit of web development can be really useful because at some point, everybody's gonna need a website. Now, number seven, we have sales. This is mainly for people who are more interested in the business side of things and have done a few case competitions or sales competitions, and they really liked it. I know that there are quite a few engineers who do end up working in some form of sales just because they end up being really good at it. This is more of a you never know job, so may as well give it a shot. And if it turns out that you're not great at it, then you can try and do something that you're a little bit better at. Now in a more technological, but also similar realm to the last one, we have a software consultant. You can be hired to be a software consultant where you are customer facing and you're talking to customers about what their software needs are for big corporations. And then you would take that information, work with your team, delegate it to the software engineers who would then put the software together and ship it off to your corporate customer. Or if you're not interested in the business customer facing side of things, you could also do software consulting as the actual engineer who builds out the projects. Now this can be a really cool job because every project will be different, so you'll have to learn a lot and this will really help you build up your skill set. So software consulting can be a really great job for lots of different people. Now coming in at number nine, we have banking. I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the software capacity, but this one I'm talking more particularly about the financials capacity. There are tons of different branches within a bank, such as consumer loans, small business operations, Operations, credit cards, mortgages, corporate real estate, investment banking. There are tons of these different branches of finance that you could get a job in. You have to be really interested in finances and have some relevant experience to get a job like this. But if you are interested and you do have the relevant experience, this can be a really good job for engineers that really enjoy working with numbers. Now, closely related to this one is machine learning slash artificial intelligence engineer. This job can be in any big or small company across the entire globe. Artificial intelligence is a super common thing nowadays, and it's seen in literally all of our software projects. Oftentimes this job comes hand in hand with already being a software engineer or understanding how software works and it's kind of just a level up and a higher understanding of how specifically machine learning and artificial intelligence works. Now as mentioned in the last one oftentimes banks and hedge funds will really want to hire people that are good at artificial intelligence to try and trade stocks using algorithms or you'll have companies like Tesla, Facebook, Apple, and Google who have large amounts of data and want to do self driving cars or provide you with better ads or improve an algorithm on a platform like YouTube. There are tons of different companies that need this job and it's extremely in demand nowadays. So what can you do to get one of these jobs? Well, some of the most important things you could do is join a team, go to a hackathon or join a club in the things that you're interested in. Spend some time working with these teams, clubs, talking to people, getting to know the members so that they can vouch for you if you go to an interview. And if there isn't really that many teams that interest you, spend your time working on a personal project. The most important thing is to actually do something with the knowledge that you've gained. I know lots of people who just go to class and never use the knowledge they're gaining and then they don't end up getting the job. I personally have struggled with this myself. It can be hard to look at a project that you wanna complete and just think to yourself, oh man, like where do I even begin? But the most important thing is just taking those first few initial steps because then you'll begin to understand what skills you need in order to actually make this project work. And if you get to a point where it just really isn't working, you can always put it down and wait to a little bit later and then pick it up again. But regardless of whether you finish a project or not, just doing one and trying one out can be really beneficial and really help you upgrade your skills. And probably one of the most important things is to show your work to other people. Seeing is believing. Employers don't care if you wrote a project down onto your resume and you didn't show it to anywhere on the internet. This is what things like LinkedIn, your personal website are for. Make sure that if you make a project, you're showing it to people and they can see that you've actually put in the work and that you've built something that's tangible and real. 
And the final thing is that it's important to explain how you built a particular project. If all you did was copy and paste someone else's code and not really understand it, then that's not very helpful. You have to try your best to explain a project so that anyone can understand it. If you do all of these things, you will really increase your chances of getting an internship or a job after graduation. Now let's talk about how much you can expect to make. The two most important things to consider are how long you've been in school and what prior experience you have. If you've been working in a software company for two or three years while in high school and then you go to university and you apply for an internship, you will probably have a lot more negotiation leverage than somebody like me who didn't touch engineering until they went into university. However, this being the case, also remember to not sell yourself too short. There are lots of companies out there who will try to get you for extremely cheap, and even if you're not super knowledgeable, your skills can still be extremely valuable. I don't recommend taking any job just for the sake of having a job. You should know your worth and don't allow any company to take advantage of you because the skills that you're learning are extremely valuable. Being with a company that you respect and that also respects you and understands that you have bills to pay and a really expensive tuition is a big win-win for both parties. However, this being said, don't expect to make too much if you're just getting started. Everybody has to start somewhere. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at Oliver Foote. Hopefully you found this video useful and I'll see you all in the next one. Whoosh.